the truth we've been messing with this tea and this week we'll talk about trials that we can face in life next week they would tell me pastor keep preaching on trials we'll just have to see about that I'm gonna talk about temptation can you say amen? amen but maybe we'll talk about trials again as it is instructive in the book of James can you say amen? Uh, but this evening, we're going to zigzag. Samuel chapter 30, verse 1. Amen. Going to zigzag. Amen. God is good all the time. And all the time, the Lord is good. Amen. You'd be amazed why God has you in Ziglag. Amen. We'll start in verse 1. I'm going to read just the first eight verses of this portion. Amen. Pastor, how do I handle the trials that I'm having in my life? Amen. Now, it happened when David and his men came to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south of Ziglag, attacked Ziglag, and burned it with fire, and had taken captive the women and those who were there, from small to great, and did not kill anyone, but carried them away, and went that way. So David and his men came to the city, and there it was, burned with fire. Imagine that. Their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. Then David and the people who were with him lifted up their voices and wept until they had no more power, wow, to weep. David, his two wives, Ahinahim, the Jezreelite and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite, had been taken captive. Now David was greatly distressed, for the people spoke of stoning him. It's your fault, David. Because the souls of all the people were grieved. How many know you could do some crazy things when you... Lord, have mercy today. Every man... For his son and his daughter. But David strengthened himself in the Lord his God. Mm. Then David said to Abiathar, the priest, Ahimelech, son, please bring the ephod here to me. And Abiathar brought the ephod to David. So David inquired of the Lord saying shall I pursue this troop and shall I overtake them and he answered him pursue wow for you shall surely overtake them and without fail recover all can you say amen, amen. you may be seated father we thank you for the wonders of your grace even in the midst of our trials 
Strengthen me now, even now. Speak your word and to speak it and declare it according to the scriptures. How I love you and know that you are a God who will never leave me nor forsake me. That even when I feel I'm at my lowest or weakest, you are there. I pray that you touch the lives of those who are struggling with various issues in life to consider your way, to consider your will, to know that even now they have not been left alone, but you are a God who cares about them. Thank you, O oh God, for what you're doing in the life of this church. Thank you, O oh God, for what you're doing in our individual lives. We bless and praise your holy name. Now let your word have free course in our lives. We surrender to you in the name of Jesus. Bless now in Jesus' name. Come on, shout amen. I want to talk about how to walk through your mess or through your trial. How to walk through your mess or your trials. Throughout life, we occasionally find ourselves in a mess or in a crisis. Often of no fault of our own, but while in a crisis, we have to make the right choices. We have to take the proper course of action if God is going to be glorified in any good is going to come out of our situation. History has told us that choices have to be made when crises arise in our lives. You remember the Boston Tea Party. It was a crisis about the taxes and they chose revolutionary war and it changed the course of our country and birthed a new nation. You remember the choice about the Civil War, the differences that lied between the North and the South, the direction of the country and the question of slavery. It brought us together as a United States of America. And even the gas crisis that came our way brought and made us think about building more fuel efficient cars to deal with the inflated gas prices and yet most of us are driving cars that eat up gas every day. Even the crisis of terrorism that we are facing today that led from the tragedies of 9-11, even the sweeping changes that have occurred today in aviation regulations and in security and airport security. Now you go to the airport, it looks like they're stripping you down. You're trying to wear loose clothing even before you get there so you won't be embarrassed by trying to take off that other stuff. Come on, say amen. amen. David faced a crisis or a trial in his life. As a matter of fact, David seemed to find himself in one mess after another. Can anybody identify with that? As soon as you get out of one thing, something else arises. As soon as you turn one corner, it seems like there's something else behind that corner. Have I got somebody? David finds himself having to deal with Saul and then having to deal with others, and now here come the Amalekites who has pillaged the city, imprisoned his women and children, and he returns to the billowing smoke and the burning of his home. You can hear the words of that cartoon character again. It's another fine mess you've gotten us in, David. But the road of life is paved with trials. It's paved with crises. It's paved with ups and downs. But the question is, how do we handle them when they come our way? Nobody's going to be able to escape the fact that if you live long enough, you're going to deal with trouble. You hang around here long enough, you're going to have some differences in your life. But the question is, how do you deal with those differences will make the major difference in your life? This episode, this biblical history is here to demonstrate to us that God is willing to direct our affairs even when we are in a mess. Has anybody ever been in a mess? Does anybody ever have to deal with any crisis in their lives? We serve a God who will not abandon us when the chips are down. 
when we have our back up against the wall, when things are not going our way, we ought to know that God still is ready to deliver us and to help us in our situation. Pastor, how do you know that? Verse 6, when facing a crisis, God calls for us to respond courageously. You know, there comes a time in life when it seems like all of your strength, I wish I had somebody, is gone. Uh, it, it seems like you can't take another step. You ought to know that God is always there to strengthen you and to help you see your way through. Somebody has said it's not what happens around us or to us that makes or breaks us. It's what happens in us that really makes the difference. And this text is a clear demonstration of that. Do you know sometimes God has got to take you through some things to some things in order to get you to where he wants you to be? I wish I had somebody. That, that you can't always go the route you plan. That sometimes God will set a detour along the way. And it is just like detours. Whenever you take the detour, it seems like it's a bumpy route. It seems like a rough road. It, it seems like it's hard to navigate. Sometimes God is going to take you through the fire. Sometimes he's going to take you through the flood. Sometimes God's going to take away those things that you depend on. He's going to take away those things that you cherish. And here comes David back to Ziglag. His wife, his sons, his daughters are gone. And he responds in a human way. Naturally, he begins to weep. Grown men, soldiers, warriors, weeping, the Bible says, till they had no strength. Then all of a sudden, in the midst of that grief, somebody had to say the wrong thing. It's David's fault. Let's stone him. Let's kill him. He got us into this mess. If we wasn't wandering off, messing around with the Philistines, we'd have been here when the Amalekites had come along. Have I got somebody? But then there is that spiritual response, the, the kind of response that produces something in our lives. Have I got somebody? I know David probably was thinking that, listen, if I wasn't messing around with those Philistines, if I, if I wasn't in the wrong place and doing the wrong thing, if I had been home, this never would have occurred. Has anybody been in the wrong place, doing the wrong thing? And they wasn't at home and something occurred? I wish I had somebody being real with me. If, if I never would have went down that road, if I, if I never would have hooked up with that person, if I, if I never would have made that choice, I would be somewhere else in life. I wish I had company up in here. And so David could have blamed himself could have felt that God was judging him, but, but David showed his great insight into the character of God because when sometimes you're looking for comfort and you turn to everything and everybody and there's nobody there, you can turn to the Lord. Have I got somebody? I suggest that if you're going through something, God is trying to get your attention. As a matter of fact, he put it in your way because you probably had not been on your knees long enough. You, you probably put your Bible down. You, had, you hadn't seen a read scripture in a while. And the problem that you're facing right now is one God allowed to come into your life. Because whenever you're facing trials, God's voice seemed to increase in your life. Pain has a way of helping us hear God's voice more clearly. I wish I had help in here. Pain has a way of making us cry out to God. Pain has a way of putting us on our knees and saying, Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know. If you withdraw, I, I, you my last stop here. You withdraw yourself from me, where shall I? Help me today. Be encouraged, child of God. You don't have to leave God because things have gone bad and bitter in your life. As a matter of fact, God can do his best work when things are bad and bitter in your life. Have I got somebody? 
I mean, it ain't until God gets your attention. It's not until you come to your end. It's not until you get to the end of your rope that God can step in and do his best work. Because sometimes you got to realize it never was you. It always was God. God woke you up every morning you got up. Started you on your way every time you walked out the door. It wasn't your strength. It was God's strength. David was experiencing, not experiencing his first crisis. He was experiencing continual crisis. And what God does with each crisis is provide strength. Well, I told him this morning, sometimes when you're going through something, you got to go back and pull out your fire of the things you've already been through and what God has already showed up in your life and already worked it out. Have I got a witness? Because sometimes when you're going through a situation, I'm talking about when you're going through, when you can't see your way through, your head ain't up, it's down. Only thing you got is your, to remember what God has done. And sometimes, child of God, when I'm going through a situation, I got to look back over what God has already brought me through to get my shot on because where it look, the way it looks right now, it don't look like shouting time. But when I think about how good he's been to me, when I think about how far he's brought me, when I recognize that God has brought me through some things and over some things I couldn't get myself through and over, then I realize the same God that kept me back then is the same God that can keep me right now. I wish you'd come go with me here. God was making David stronger. What do you mean he's making David stronger? The book say he wept until he had no more. Hmm. So sometimes God got to exhaust all of your resources. Sometimes he got to run you down to empty in order to fill you back up. Have I got somebody? God's trying to get some things out your life. He's trying to get some things out your mouth. He's trying to get some things out your heart. You got to get to empty in order for him to fill you. Good God Almighty. You got to act courageously. Courageously, God can give you power in this situation. Secondly, listen. When you're facing trials, God calls for godly counsel. Ooh, Jesus, help. The Bible says, verse 7, David said, bring me. Bring me the ephah. He is David, a renegade warrior. He's no king right now. Bring me the ephah. Sometimes in a crisis, it's who you go to, what you ask for, and what you do. I'm going to say that again. Sometimes in a crisis, it's who you go to, what you ask for, and what you do. When you're going, you're going through, make sure you don't talk to the chronicle. Make sure you don't drop your pain in the wrong place. Because when you're hurting, you got to talk to somebody. I, I, I want to talk to somebody that I've been through something in here. I, I want to talk to some people who, who had their back up against the wall. I want to talk to some people who know that you were down to your last dime and all of your options were out. When you're hurting, sometimes you don't care who's listening. I just need to talk to somebody. Will anybody pick up their phone? Will, will anybody text me back? Will anybody email me now? But you got to be careful. You got to be careful. Bring me the ephah. Bring me that sacred garment. I, he put it around his neck. It was the garment that the high priest would wear. It had two sacred stones in it because you have to discern the will of God. Were you in the midst of your situation? Have I got somebody? Because really, child of God, when you're going through, it can wear you down. Can I get some company in here? I'm talking about it can wear you out. I'm talking about you get to the point you say, not another father. 
not another. Don't you look at me wrong. Don't you say the wrong thing. Another word out your mouth if you look at me another time too hard. You ever been there? I'm talking about not another father. I, I, I don't want nobody to call me with the wrong thing. Don't say the wrong thing to me. This car better start this morning and nobody better be in my way. Not another father. You ever been there? You need the Lord. Oh, help me here. I got too many people living holy up in here that don't know what it means when you're broken and holy. You need the Lord. You got to be careful. And when you go to folk and they start talking to you and you can't hear the presence of God coming out their mouth, you need to leave that alone. You got a mess. You don't need no more mess. I need to hear from God. I need to feel his presence. I need to feel his power. Because I'm at my end. I'm vulnerable. I'm weak. And folk trying to kill me. Are you with me here? David was listening for God's voice. David's intimate relationship with the one who he had from the beginning. He went back to him and said, Lord, I need your strength. Because he was out of strength. Have I got somebody? So you got to be careful. Who you talk to when you going through. You might become trash. And you might not find your triumph. Number three. When you're facing trials. Watch this now because a whole lot of us just do the very opposite. When you're facing trials, God calls us to a committed level. Lord, rid me of folk who want God to do everything in their life and stop by the church every now and then. You ain't got to say amen. We want God to work a miracle in our lives and we stop by on God every now and then. And God is trying to say to us, the problem with your life right now is the lack of commitment. Maybe the reason you're in your mess right now is the lack of commitment. You did not consult God about what you were doing. You went your own way. You tried it and done it for yourself. Now you got yourself in the mess that you're in, and God says you got to change some things. You lack focus. We want greatness, but greatness is hooked up and mixed with commitment. Touch your neighbor and say, greatness is with commitment. Commitment will get back, verse 8, everything you want. Have I got somebody? Some crisis exists in our lives because we're spread out too far. We're all over the place trying to do everything. And we don't get nothing done. I wish you were up in here. Our problem is we've got to reevaluate some commitments we made in this life. God can't do nothing to us until we shed some of that junk out of our lives. We change our schedule. We find some time for God. We stop being exhausted every evening and that we can get to the place that we can get in our secret closet and listen to the God who's been trying to talk to us. You ain't got to say amen. Believe me, it's trying to get your attention. You got to change your agenda. David, David said, let's, let's pursue. The Bible says when he got ready to pursue, some of his men says, I'm tired. I ain't going with you. You know what happens when you get committed? There's some folk that ain't going with you. 
Some folk ain't, ain't going to follow you now because you've changed your priorities. You've changed your agenda. You've got a different value system now that's functioning in your life. And some folk going to cut you loose. You ain't looking like you used to look. Have I got somebody? You know, when things are going bad in your life, there are some people ain't going to ride with you. As long as you had some money in your pocket. Huh? As long as you were living at a different zip code, as long as you were riding on them 24s, they were riding with you. But as soon as things shifted in your life, hey man, look, i catch you later. You know, I got something else coming up on my schedule. You know, we'll, I'll catch up with you later. They ain't going with you. You got to reevaluate some commitment. And some folk don't need to be with you. Listen, child of God, you got to realign yourself. Realignment means that I'm not going to quit. I can't go on further doing what I've always done, but I can do something else. Got to realign it. Can't keep doing the same old things you used to do. Maybe you can't hold 15 different positions. You can hold two or maybe one. Maybe things have changed in your household that you've got to resign from being director or president and take care of the house. But if you take care of the house, God will take care of director and president. Some of the things we're going through is because we haven't considered what our lives look like. We got to put things before us and decide, hey, I can't do that no more. Are you with me here? Sometimes the best thing you can say in a crisis is, I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I need you. I can't get another father without you. Are you with me here? I need to do the things that will make a difference. I don't need to do everything. And sometimes we're doing too many things. And when we do too many things, we break relationships. We lose people in our lives. Other things have become more important than our home life, and then the home life becomes ruined. Or when we get back home, everything is gone. But when I reevaluate, when I realign myself with the will of God, God can reward me. David understood that every position was important and equally rewarding, but he also understood everybody can't go with me. Oh, come on. That some folk need to stop trying to hold positions based on prestige, and they need to do what's practically right in their lives. He got to the place. He recognized, y'all stay here. We will pursue. Verse 14, or 9 through 14. When you're facing trials, watch this now, because I'm almost finished. When you're facing trials, God calls for his change. If you're stuck in the past, you're not going to make it. Because there's some things going to happen in your life there ain't no transcript for. You've never been there. You've never been down this road. you never come across this path. You never experienced this brokenness in your life. You never felt this pain. You never been this broke. You never been evicted. You never had your car taken away. You never been there before. You got no transcript. But change happens in our lives. Don't change for change's sake. And don't change just because it's difficult. But difficulty can come along with change. All David had from God in verse 9, listen, all he had was pursue. I would have been mad. Wife, children, home, car, everything was gone. And all you going to say to me, I need a little bit more direction than that. You got a GPS system? You know which way he went? How many people am I supposed to take? 
You know how long this is going to take? You know, I want a little bit more. You better hear me now. What do you do when you come to a place you've never been before? What do you do when you hurt in life like you never hurt before? What do you do when you're broken in life like you've never been broke before? I'll tell you what you do. When you come to a situation that you never had before, don't think that God can't operate in a situation you never had before. You take the little that God gives you and put it to use. Have I got somebody? This is all God told me to do, pursue. That's all the direction I got. I don't know where, what to do. I don't really know where I'm going, but I know he told me to step out. And when you step, some folk ain't going with you. When you step, some folk going to talk about you. But step. Hold it, I ain't finished. He didn't give me but just this one word, take off. Our problem, we got too comfortable where we are. You heard me. David, since the time he was running from Saul, y'all ain't read your Bible, let me help you. He's running from Saul. God has been blessing every step he took. I wish I had somebody. He got more men. He got mighty warriors. He, he, he has become, he got sons, daughters. He got houses. God has blessed everything. Have I got somebody? And sometime, I'm going to back you up. Sometimes when God blesses everything, we get content. We get satisfied. We think that's all God has for us. Have I got somebody? So God had to break him. I wish I had somebody. Because he was going to take him to other places. I wish I had somebody. He's not king. He's just a warrior. But in chapter 1 of 2 Samuel, he's getting ready to be king. But sometimes before you get to the throne, you got to be taken down. Oh, you better hear me now. You thinking it's going, it's going the wrong way. But I got news for you. It's going the right way. Have I got somebody? God done broke you. God done took up some things away from you. Life ain't like it used to be. You ain't riding high. You're not a baller and shot caller, but it's going the right way. Touch your neighbor and say it's going the right way. You ain't driving a new car. You're driving a used car, but it's going the right way. You ain't living in a place you used to live. You're living in a different place, but it's going the right way. Never had a problem with your husband, but you got problems now. It's going the right way. Wes, you crazy. Well, according to my Bible, David never had a problem. But God couldn't make him king. Watch this. Because he wasn't ready yet. He was ready for the blessings he had. But God had some bigger blessings. He was ready for the lifestyle he had. But God had a bigger lifestyle. And sometimes to get from one level to the next level, you don't go up, you go down. Touch your neighbor and say, that's what I'm going through. God has brought me down. It's just a detour, baby. He's taking you back up. God's going to get you to the place he wants you to go. But if he got you there too soon, you wouldn't be ready. What you say, Pastor? 
You ain't ready for that split level house. You ain't ready for that Mercedes Benz. Because if he gave it to you now, you had your nose up in the air. Some folk you wouldn't be speaking to. You wouldn't stop by the church often enough and bless his name. I ain't ready yet. Touch your neighbors. I ain't ready yet. It ain't in your driveway because you ain't ready yet. It ain't because God ain't got it. It ain't in your pocket because you ain't ready yet. It ain't because God doesn't have it. Not ready yet. I touch your neighbor and say, get me ready, God. Do you mean it? It was going smooth. Everything was going right. And all of a sudden, my life is upside down. Touch him again and say, get me ready, God. The first thing you got to do is take that little you know and operate in it. Have I got somebody? You ain't got the car. Things are not going right. But take the little you know and operate in God's will. And as you drive, I got some things to tell you. Come on, jump in the car and get ready. God's taking you to another place. He's about to elevate you to another level. He's about to show you a new thing in your life. God's got some plans for you that are better than what you have right now. Are you ready? Number one, don't be surprised that while you're broken, God's keep dropping little things to keep you encouraged. I wish I had some broken people in this house. Huh. I, I, I'm talking about broken when it looked dark. You didn't know what you was going to do. You didn't know how you was going to make it. It didn't come from you. You knew it was from the Lord. I wish I had somebody. That money, that car, that breakthrough, that job. I don't know how I got it. It came from God. Broken, discouraged, but he keeps dropping things in my way that keeps me moving in the right direction. Oh, come on. Look what he does to David. We in that car, stay in the car. He discovers an Egyptian who's been left by the Amalekites. How long has he been left? How long has David been gone? So he walks up on this disgruntled employee and said he didn't know where he was going. Didn't know where to find his wives, his children, his son. He didn't know had life ever happened to you, you just walked up on something. You his child, but you walked up on what you needed in that moment that blessed you and helped you to keep going. Have you ever just walked up on something? I need some witnesses in this house. David says to him, man, you know where my, my wife and kids are? He says, I know, but don't kill me. If you don't kill me, I'll tell you. You see, child of God, when you do the little that God tells you to do, God's got some things planted along the way. I'm talking about, it's a rough road now. It is the dusty road now, and the car is breaking down every now and then. Look like you got all leak, your gas is slow, but every now and then, God blesses you along the way to keep you moving in the right direction. I ain't through yet. Look, 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 look. He looking for, when you're going through, what you looking for? Direction. Take what God has given you, do what God told you, and as you travel, God will give you direction. He got, a, he got discovery. This is an Egyptian. From that Egyptian mouth, from the mouth of an Egyptian, can I help you? Out of the world. 
Because Egypt is representative of what? Of the world. Out of a worldly man's mouth, he got help to do God's will. I'm talking about when you're going through. I'm trying to get home from Jacksonville to Houston. Can I tell you? And I'm trying to load the car up on a ramp. Oh, come on, help me here. And I drive the car over the ramp. Here I am with a jack, jack in the car, bag in the back, jack in the car, bag in the back. Here come a brother down the street. Hold up now. He got a tall boy in his hand. I'm God's child. I'm coming to Southeast to preach the gospel. I wish I had somebody. God will take the unrighteous and bless your life if you're willing to do his will. And he says to me, hey, man, what you doing? I said, I done broke this rack, and I need to get the car jacked back on it. I do this every day. Somebody don't know how God moves. No, you don't know how God moves. You do what every day? I do it every day. And if I tell you it was hot that day, it was hot. I was already sweating. You know what he told me? Hold my long, my tall boy. I'm just trying to help you now. I grabbed it. He got under that car and went to working, tied it up. That car stayed on the rack for a thousand miles. When he got up from under the car, I said, man, let me give you something. He said, no, no. I'm all right, man. And kept on walking. I got to bag it up. I got to bag it up. How is it that on that day, when I broke my car, he came walking by? I'm telling you, there's a God somewhere. And he works in mysterious ways with oneness to perform. He can take a crooked stick and make a straight lick. But wait a minute, God. I'm really through. Wait a minute, God. Why did you let zigzag happen? Why? Why? Why did you break me down? Till I wept. Till I had no, no strength. Why did you let my own men think about Stoning me. Then why did you let me, who was a warrior, take the ephah and put it around my neck? You know what God really said? I broke you for something better. You ain't got it yet. I got you in boot camp because I'm about to raise your rank. You, 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 you don't have it yet? I got you going through because I'm getting you ready to do something bigger and better. You've been a warrior all this time, but I'm about to make you king. Have I got somebody? Now, there are folk looking at your brokenness, but they don't know what's coming next. I wish I had somebody. They've already counted you out, but God is about to count you in. They already said you done and dead, but God is about to resurrect your situation and you about to go to a new level. But you can't get there unless you go through zigzag. Take it away. Take it away everything I got if it moves me closer. Some of y'all ain't ready. I said, take it all away if it moves me closer. Because if I follow you, I'll get it all back. Sometimes the biggest deposit God can make in your life is to break you. 
is to send you through. Touch your neighbor and say, I'm going through. But now the operative word is, I'm going through. You ain't there to stay. You going through. You didn't realize why God brought you or took you through it, but I'm telling you today, you weren't ready yet. So God had to take you through in order to get you ready for your coronation. He's about to bless you. God has a funny way of blessing us. He has a funny way of moving us out of our comfort zone and to moving us where he wants us to be. He has a funny way of delivering us from some folk and things we should have been delivered from a long time ago. But we were going to stay with them folk until he broke us. You going through? He's taking you through because he's trying to get you from Ziglag to Jerusalem. In Ziklag, you're broken. In Jerusalem, you're blessed. In Ziklag, you're on your knees. But in Jerusalem, they're crowning you king. Heads are bowed and eyes are closed. Listen. Listen. Pastor, I'm going through. I never thought that God was up to something. I only thought that, man, I made a mistake. I messed up. But the sovereign will of God says that nothing can enter into your life without his permission. That's his sovereign will. And I'm suggesting to you that God wants you to act courageously and turn to him. Very possibly David did not check with God to go with them Philistines. But the next move he made, he checked with God. Very possibly right now God wants you to seek his presence, his power, his providential care. You got to listen for his voice. He wants you to listen to some godly counsel. Very possible God could be calling you to a new level of commitment in your life because you're facing trials. It's very possible that God's going to make some changes in, his li in your life. You're going to make some discoveries. You're going to get some new direction. And he's going to make a deposit in your life because he's trying to get you ready for the next level. Say, Pastor, I'm going through. And I'm going to trust God to take what I'm going through to make me better and to bless me right where you are. You stand. Come on. Sometimes I feel like giving up It seems like my best just ain't good enough Lord, if you hear me, I'm calling you Do you see, do you care all about what I'm going through? And then he said, one more one more step See I'm preparing you For myself And when you can't hear my voice Please trust my plan I'm the Lord I see And yes I understand But sometimes I feel like I'm all alone I'm just like a stranger So far from home I feel like I've done All that I can do Please Lord give me strength I'm just trying to make it through and That's when he told me
he says, I am the Lord, and I change it not. I won't forget, no, have I forgot. You see, everything works according to my plan. I am God, trust me, I got the whole world in my hands. Oh! 